Hey, good evening, uh, Northgate family and all the friends of Northgate. Once again, we're so happy to have you on this Wednesday night um, as we continue our study in the book of Acts. We're going to be in um, chapter 19 tonight, starting with verse 1. Um, last week, we were in the, at the end of chapter 18. We were, uh, uh, we were talking about uh, uh, how Paul had met Apollos. And um, he was an, the, the scripture tells us that he was an eloquent speaker and he had, he had so much going for him. Uh, he knew the scriptures well and uh, he had been taught the way of the Lord. Uh, but come to find out that uh, Apollos, he only knew about John's baptism and didn't know about what it meant to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And so... Uh, even as he was speaking at different places, uh, uh, remember Priscilla and Aquila, they were, they're wonderful, uh, wonderful saints of the church, uh, leaders in the church, and uh, they went to hear him speak, and they had to correct him on certain things that he just, not like he was trying to uh, persuade anybody in a bad way, he just wasn't, he just wasn't sure of everything that he was saying, and so Priscilla and Aquila, they call them to his house and they had probably had dinner and they said, Hey, listen, we want to talk to you. You've got some things wrong here. And it's really about, it's about Jesus. And so anyway, they, they really helped him out. Well, tonight we're going to be uh, going with Paul on his third missionary journey. And Paul is going to be uh, going to Ephesus. So let's pick up verse one and we'll read through uh, verse 10 here. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled uh, through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast where he found several brothers. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe, he asked them. No, they replied. We haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then what baptism did you experience, they asked, or he asked. And they replied, the baptism of John. Paul said, John's baptism called for repentance from sin, but John himself told the people to believe in the one who would come later, meaning Jesus. Um, and so as soon as they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with other tongues and they prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Paul went into the synagogue then and preached boldly there for the next three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some, some became stubborn, uh, rejecting his message and publicly speaking against the way. So Paul left the uh, synagogue and he took the believers with him and, and uh, he, he took some believers with him and, and held daily discussions in the lecture hall of Tyrrhenius. This went on for, for the next two years. So the people throughout the providence of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. So Paul goes to Ephesus. The scripture says he didn't take the main road there to Ephesus. He, he went along a higher road because it was shorter and it was, it was less crowded. Uh, he was now in the providence of Asia. And there he met a group of men in Ephesus. Luke says that they were believers, but Paul realized that there was something wrong with their faith. So much like Apollos, they knew about, they knew about John the Baptist, the baptism of John the Baptist, but they didn't know about being baptized in the name of Jesus. So they asked whether or not they'd received the Holy Spirit, and their response was, their response was no one has ever told us about the Holy Spirit. In verses 3 and 4, we can see that uh, they had received from John the Baptist, as I just said, and, uh, and probably from one of his disciples. It probably wasn't John himself, but maybe one of his disciples, and they were baptized. And, uh, and then Paul explains then that that wasn't enough. Uh, they must follow Jesus, not John. 
and that John's baptism was John's baptism was to prepare them uh, for when Jesus came. Now, uh, now that he came, uh, he has done his work on earth, went to the Father, and sent them the gift of the Holy Spirit. In verses five and seven, we saw that the men received the baptism in water for us for for a second time. Uh, but this time they were they were baptized in the name of Jesus. This time Paul laid his hands upon them, and as he laid his hands upon them, they said they began to uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke in other tongues, and they prophesied. So not only did they receive salvation, you know they repented of their sins with John, but they were but they were baptized with John's baptism, but but not. In the name of Jesus. And so in verses 8 and 9, we see then that Paul went to the synagogue. Now, as we've been talking about, every time he goes into a particular town or a region or, or an area, he goes and looks for the local synagogue and he begins to speak there. He preached about God's kingdom every time he went into a synagogue. Uh, and that kingdom was by, by means of of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And that's what he was preaching to them. And his kingdom uh, is here for all who, who would accept him as Savior and Lord. And so uh, Paul preached like this for three months there in that synagogue. He tried to persuade many of the, many of the Jews to believe what he was talking about. Of course, there were some Jews who would continue to oppose Paul and um, it was very difficult they were having a hard time uh, breaking away from Jewish traditions and laws and uh, those types of things and so they they tried to persuade other Jews also to come against Paul and uh, and be in opposition to Paul they continue to speak very bad things, it says, about the people of the way. So they not only attacked uh, uh, Paul as the messenger, but they attacked all those people that they had have, have been hearing of that have been followers of the way, or in, in other words, followers of Jesus. They were disciples of Jesus Christ. So once again, Paul felt like he needed to leave, and so he took some of the believers with him, uh, he found a, a building or a, or a lecture hall type of thing owned by Tyrrhenius and uh, where the people would come and they would hear other people uh, give lectures in these halls. This wasn't, this wasn't necessarily a holy place. It was a lecture hall. People would go there and just lecture on whatever philosophy that they thought they wanted to teach everybody. Well, Paul had, Paul again was well-spoken and uh, he knew his stuff. He knew the scriptures. He knew the Old Testament, and he would and he would be in that lecture hall, uh, uh, speaking about the kingdom of God and the and and that Jesus was the Messiah. Um, it seems as though Paul went back to making tents, and so for a while he probably did his work in the morning, and he would preach in the afternoon. And so, but Paul and other Christians, uh, they, seem to, they seem to work tirelessly for the kingdom of God. Uh, it, it seems like their, their energy came from the Holy Spirit and they continued to do this every day. They were driven because of the power of the Holy Spirit was upon them. And uh, we know what that's like when, when there's things that we've got to do and we don't know if we have the strength to do it. How many times have we felt I don't know, maybe we were up against something that was difficult for us. Maybe a sickness or maybe a, uh, the fact that, that you had to make some decisions on things and you sort of felt like your, 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 your body might have been, been drained of, of all of its energy. And then we go to the Holy Spirit and we ask him to help us, give us strength, give us courage. How many of us ever have ever just asked God for strength? And so the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we do begin to do the things we can do only in Christ. Um, you know, no, one, no wonder the scripture says that we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. So um, in verse 10, it 
The scripture here tells us that Paul stayed in Ephesus for two more years. Now, there were many people who came to Ephesus for business, um, but they also came to worship the goddess uh, Artemis. Now, the goddess of Artemis was the goddess of the hunt, is the goddess of the wilderness, uh, of wild animals, of nature, vegetation, childbirth, care for children. He was the god- she was the goddess of all of those things. And so, uh, um, so there were people who would come uh, to Ephesus uh, not only because you know, they wanted to do business, but, but also to come and worship the goddess Artemis. So Paul, being in that situation, being in that town, and dealing with people who had all these other beliefs, their belief in Artemis and all the other Greek gods that were available, uh, Paul had many, many chances, chances, I should say, uh, for many different people, both Jews and Greeks. And uh, what a task that was. But uh, he, 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 along with a number of others, we're preaching the good news, the, me- the message of Jesus, the Messiah. The second section talks about the uh, seven sons of Sceva. And I want us to read verses uh, 11 through 20 here. God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. When handkerchiefs or aprons that had, had merely touched his skin... Uh, They were placed on sick people and they were healed of their diseases. The evil spirits were even expelled. A group of Jews was traveling from town to town, casting out evil spirits. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in in, in, in their incarnation, saying, I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. But one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped upon them and and overpowered them and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. The story of what happens quickly spread throughout Ephesus to Jews and Greeks alike. A solemn, listen to this, a solemn fear descended upon the city. And the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. Many, many who became believers, they confessed their sinful practices. A number of them who had been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. The value of the books were several million dollars. Just try to imagine that. So the message about the Lord spread quickly and uh, had had a powerful effect. So let's let's dive into this. Uh, Starting with verses 11 through 13. (coughs) Excuse me. Paul was still making tents, as I said earlier. He went back to tent making for a while. And he probably... He probably like would wear a cloth around his head. You know how sometimes uh, workers out in, out in the field would, will do that. And uh, this would help him stay cool. And he would most likely even have some of his, his clothes covered with this cloth uh, to protect his clothes from dust and dirt and that, that type of thing. The people in Ephesus, they took these cloths. And uh, they took them to sick people, and they took the the cloths that had been on Paul. Now, remember, it said when we first started reading this, uh, uh, verse 11, that God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. So they were kind of thinking, if if there's anything that would even touch touch Paul, maybe, maybe you could take some of those cloths and put them on us, and we too would be healed. And the people believed that, they thought that. And so they took, they took these cloths and they put them on sick people and they were healed. And uh, uh, also they put them on people who had evil spirits and they were delivered from evil spirits when they came in contact 
uh, with a cloth. Now, the cloths themselves did not have any special or divine powers. I know some people have a hard time with this and they want to believe that, you know, certain certain oil from the Holy Land or, a, you know, I, I, and I'm not saying I don't believe in prayer cloths, but they become a point of contact. They become a, a point of, of uh, helping someone with their faith to believe. That's all it is. But there's absolutely no power in the cloth. None. And um, Paul did not, uh, ha Paul, Paul uh, he had the ability to, as we said, uh, to to do perform perfect, uh, per, uh, uh, unusual miracles, but uh, uh, Paul, in in and of himself, didn't have power. This power came from from, uh, from from the power of the Holy Spirit. Came from God. You know, even even in the Gospel of Luke, chapter eight, verses forty three and forty eight, you can read that at, at some point. Luke records that a sick woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Remember the story? She was trying to work through the crowd. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that she would be healed. And then Jesus even said, I, ha I felt power come, from me, come, out of, uh, from, come out from him. And the woman became well immediately. Jesus tells this woman that she was well. Now, this is what I want you to understand. Jesus tells this woman, good, let me, let me put it in another way. Jesus didn't say this. Well, it's a good thing you got to touch the hem of my garment because had you not, you'd not been, it would not be well. No, he didn't say that. What he said was, you got well because your faith hath made you well. It's, it's our faith so it's okay to it's o, it's okay to anoint cloths and that kind of thing, but they are just a point of faith. They are a point of contact, faith. But they, but they but they're not. There's nothing powerful in and of themselves in the cloths. See, God cures in many ways. He heals in many ways. But when people have faith in Jesus, God's power to heal them is there. If you need healing in your body tonight, you don't need to wait for the hem of somebody of, of an apostle's garment or Jesus' garment, or or, or even the, or, or even the prayer of a pastor. What you have to do is exercise faith and believe that Jesus has the power to heal, and you too can be made well in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus also has power over evil spirits, and uh, some Jews realize this. So they use the name of Jesus to force out evil spirits. They were, they were trying to use the name of Jesus almost like magic. So people who use the name of Jesus must first know Jesus. If you, if you plan to cast out evil spirits, you better know who Jesus is. You better have a relationship with him. You better have been born again of the Spirit. And filled with the Spirit of God. You need to have the Spirit of God living inside of you. And if they don't, and if people don't, they're in danger. Because the, the, because the power of the enemy is very strong. And you don't want to come up against him not, not knowing or having a relationship with Jesus. So, in verses 14 and through 16, Luke describes what happens next. He says... Uh, that that he talks about Sceva, who who was who was supposed to have been a priest. Now Paul only said this because at the time that's what they said. They said we're called the seven uh, sons of Sceva, but there was never a priest in Jerusalem by the name of Sceva. So. He, Obviously, these seven guys, I don't know if they were brothers, but they called themselves the seven sons of Sceva. They didn't necessarily have to be brothers, but they called themselves the seven sons of Sceva. It almost, it's almost as though they made the name up, and it, was, it wasn't, a real, wasn't a real name. Uh, uh, they may have made a false claim about being part of the priesthood. And, uh, and, and what Luke is doing, he's just merely reporting what they said. Um, people would pay 
these these types of people, these seven sons of Sceva, they would pay them to drive out evil spirits. Uh, they knew Paul used the name of Jesus, so they said, if Paul can do it, we can do it. But they didn't have a relationship with Jesus like Paul did. So they just copied Paul. They had no authority in the name of Jesus to do what they were doing. They had not accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord. So as they were trying to cast out this evil spirit out of this man, the evil spirit spoke back to them. This evil spirit realized that these seven imposters had no power to make anything leave, had no power at all over an evil spirit. So here's what, they, here's what the evil spirit said to these seven sons of Sceva. I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Then it says that the spirit attacked them. It beat them up, tore up their clothes. They ran out, they ran out of wherever they were, naked and bloody. I'm going to tell you, it's dangerous to use the name of Jesus in the wrong way. You, you, you better know who you are in Christ. So this story, it also reminds us as believers that we truly do have power over the, the, the evil spirits. And uh, we, have power over, we have power over sickness. And we have power over disease. The Bible tells us that. If Jesus is our Lord, we can use his name. How many know there's power in the mighty name of Jesus? Power in his name. In verses 18 and 20, it tells us that many people in Ephesus, they would, uh, they would perform magic. But when they heard about the, about the sons of Sceva, they now wanted to turn away from this magic. They didn't want to have anything to do with it. They said, whew, this is, this is, this is pretty serious. Uh, we, we don't want to have anything to do with magic anymore. We believe in what Paul is saying. We believe in the message of the gospel. We believe that Jesus is the Messiah. We believe that we need to, need to repent of our sin. So there were people who were doing magic at one particular time, said, no more, we're, we're not going to do this. They repented. They, uh, and, and to, to show that they, they repented, uh, they did something very significant. They had books about magic, books about sorcery, and they brought them to a public square and they threw them in the fire. They destroyed them. Can you imagine the sounds coming out of that fire? It doesn't, Bible doesn't say, I'm just imagining. Uh, those books that said cost a lot of money. I, this particular translation, translation said millions of do, a million dollars, but who knows? You know, it may, may be equivalent to what we, what we would consider a million dollars. But it didn't matter that they lost that money. They wanted more than anything now to obey God. They saw the power. They saw the power of Jesus in, in the life of Paul. And uh, they, they, and they saw those who tried to be imposters. What would happen to them had they had they used Jesus' name in the wrong way? So now they wanted to obey God. See, when believers in Ephesus destroyed their books, the Bible tells us that many more people became believers in Jesus. They saw that the believers' faith was real and it was true. And uh, you didn't have to pretend, you didn't have to make up stories or anything else like that. You just found, you, you found the Messiah, you found the truth in the gospel, and uh, they realized the real power that was in Jesus' name. And I hope we realize that too today, that there's power, there's real power in the name of Jesus. That's what we preach, that's what we teach, and we always will. And I know, I know you believe it too. So it's a great story, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that it, it's re it was recorded for us. And to help us understand, 
e e even though there's demonic forces out there that would try to destroy this, there's power in the strong name of Jesus. Amen? Well, God bless you. Have a great night, and we'll continue next week. Bye-bye.